Welcome everyone to the Dragonflight 10.1 Retribution Paladin Rework Guide. My name is Gorlock, and I am a world-class Retribution Paladin, achieving feats across all three endgame pillars such as Horde Hall of Fame, Top 10 World M+, and Hero the Horde in PvP, amongst many other feats. This guide will be focusing on PvE and covering everything you need to know going into Dragonflight 10.1, which is releasing May 2nd for the US and May 3rd for Eastern countries. Going into the expansion's second raid, Abarus, the Shadow Crucible, and Mythic Plus Season 2, the Retribution Paladin is looking the strongest it has ever been in the last seven years. So let's get straight into it. With the Paladin rework, we now have a true separation of class and spec. So let's first start with what the new Paladin and Retribution baselines look like. First, for Paladin, we get our Damage Skills, Judgment, and Crusader Strike, our Defensive, Divine Shield, our Utility, Hammer of Justice, Redemption, and Intercession, our v -res, our Healing of Word of Glory and Flash of Light, and finally Shield of the Righteous, Hand of Reckoning, and Sense of Dead, which will rarely be used. For the Retribution Baseline, we get Divine Protection, another defensive, our Mastery Passive, Instrument of Retribution, our passive on Ally Death Wings proc, Templar's Verdict, and Consecration. Now, when you spec for Retribution Paladin, you will automatically get a few free additional abilities of Blessing of Freedom, Hammer of Wrath, and Retribution slash Crusader Aura. Everything else is learned from talents. Let's discuss the talent overhaul now and where you get the rest of your abilities and choices as well as viable builds. First, let's start on the Paladin side. Starting at the very top left, you have your iconic healing ability, Lay on Hands. This is by default a 10 minute cooldown, and this is an ability you will take always. It is the strongest single heal in the game. On the second row here, you have Cleanse Toxins, which is an ability that you'll take situationally. It allows you to remove poison and disease effects. Next to that, you have Devo and Concentration Aura. Mostly you'll be using Devo Aura if you do take this talent. Again, this is a situational ability. Next to that, you have Abduracy, which gives you 2% speed and avoidance. And lastly, you have Turn Evil, another niche ability that has some use sometimes in up. In M+. Plus. On the third row, you have Fist of Justice that reduces the cooldown on your Hammer of Justice, which is your six second stun. Uh, this makes it, uh, with both ranks, it tends to be about a 15 or a to 20 second cooldown instead of a minute. Next to that, you have Divine Speed, uh, which baseline has one charge, it is 40, uh, 4 seconds in duration with a 45 second recharge, gives you 100% move speed, can be used indoors, in combat, etc. Next to that, you have Greater Judgment. Um, this ability makes your Holy Power spenders do 20% more. Um, this will be applied to all targets hit by Judgment, and we'll get into that on the Retribution side. On the next row, you have a Choice node of Repentance and Blinding Light. Uh, you will almost always go with Blinding Light here. Um, it's just better. Next to that, uh, you have Cavalier, so you can get your Divine Steed to have two charges. And next to that, you have Seasoned Warhorse, uh, which can increase the duration of Divine Steed from four to six seconds. And then lastly on this row, you have Rebuke, which you will, again, almost always take, and that is your kick. Um, you'll notice that it says 8 yards, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, below that you have Holy Aegis, and that, again this is a passive talent, you will always take this. You have your Wings, uh, which yes is a 1 minute cooldown now, uh, yes you will always take this. Uh, justification uh, increases judgment's damage by 10%, uh, you will also always take this. Next to that you have Punishment. Um, this one's an interesting one, I'd call this a flex node. Um, it allows it so that when you successfully interrupt, uh, you get an extra Crusader Strike, um, or whatever is talented. In my case, I would get a 
Templar Strike. Uh, on the row below that, you have Golden Path, which you will almost never take. Uh, Blessing of Sacrifice, which is um, your defensive for another party member. Sanctified Plate, uh, two ranks. This is one of the most powerful passive uh, damage reduction slash defensive talents in the entire game. Increases your armor by 20%, stamina by 10%, and reduces all area effect damage, which is essentially avoidance by 10%, but it stacks with avoidance very well. Like it doesn't count towards um, you know, any sort of reductions. Next to that, you have Blessing of Protection. Uh, Blessing of Protection is a 10 seconds is full immunity, uh, has a five minute cooldown. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these abilities are abilities we had before or uh, are slightly modified uh, versions of that. Um, they didn't completely change everything, but a lot of the baseline of Paladin are now in Talents. Next to that is what was originally a PvP talent. Uh, you can now get Unbound Freedom. This makes it so that your target gets freedom, and when uh, you choose someone other than yourself, you also get freedom. So your target and yourself will both get freedom, and you both get 30% additional movement speed. It's uh, very good. Um, next to that, you have Light Forge Blessing. Uh, this is another talent that you will almost always take. Um, it makes so your Divine Storm heals you and up to four nearby allies for 2% of, of their max health. On the next row, you have Seal of Mercy. You'll never take this. Um, you have a choice node of After Image and Healing Hands. You will pretty much always take Healing Hands. Um, this ability makes Lay on Hands go all the way down to as low as a three minute cooldown or so. It also doubles Word of Glory's healing. Um, generally speaking, you should only really be Word of Glory in yourself when you're low. This makes it do double. Um, next to that is Recompense and Sacrifice of the Just, Choice Node. Um, between these two, you'll almost always want to take Sacrifice of the Just if you're going to take it. Um, this is one of the Flex Nodes. I'll talk about Flex Nodes in a sec after I complete this tree. Next to that is Unbreakable Spirit. Um, this one, again, you'll almost always take. Um, this reduces cooldown of your Divine Shield, Shield of Vengeance, all, pretty much all your big defensives and your one big heal by 30%. Um, so this is why, for instance, my Divine Shield is three and a half minutes instead of five. Um, you have Improved Blessing of Protection. I almost never take this, um, but it could be a flex node. It reduces Blessing of Protection by 60 seconds, so it's four minutes instead of five minutes. Next to that, uh, Crusader's Reprieve. Uh, you will always take this ability. This is uh, what I like to call Linky Arms, which is something that rogues have always had for a while. Um, this allows you to be melee plus three yards as Rhett. It is unbelievably nice. Increases the range of your Crusader Strike, Rebuke, and Auto Attacks, which are your only melee abilities by three yards. So that lets you be melee plus three. And on top of that, it makes it so your Crusader Strike or Auto Crusader Strike or Templar Strikes, what, whatever you have talented, uh, every time you use it, it heals 2% of your maximum health. It is one of the best talents in the game for a passive by far. Um, on the next row, Strength of Conviction and Judgment of Light. Uh, you'll almost never take these. Um, in this season, you could have taken Judgment of Light, which does do a ton of HPS um, for Rhett um, because you do hit... Um, five targets with your judgment, but we'll get into that later. Um, but going into 10.1, you will almost never take this. Uh, Seal of Might, you're always going to put two points into this, 4% more mastery, 4% more strength. Now this middle note here is the most interesting one. It's the one I will always keep an eye on. It's Divine Purpose. Um, it's, just, it's a very strong ability. The problem is you just don't have enough talent points um, in these um, 20 plus point area, which is these bottom three rows to take it at the moment. Um, in 10.1, it's unlikely that you're going to take it. Uh, in 10.0.7, there was a build that you could take this, but I'll get into that in a second. Uh, makes it so that your Holy Power abilities have a 10% chance to get a free Holy Power ability, and that free one does an additional 10% damage or healing. Uh, next to that, you have Seal of Alacrity, this is 4% haste and judgment uh, has one second reduced. Again, you will always take this. You have a choice node here of Incandescence or Touch of Light. Generally, of the two, you would take Incandescence, but again, this is similar 
the Divine Purpose and Judgment of Light, you just don't have enough points right now. Uh, face Armor, you're never going to take this as red. Now, for these last six points, uh, sorry, last seven points, you're going to pretty much always take these. You have Of Dusk and Dawn. This makes it so your Holy Power Spenders occasionally do 20% more damage. And then also, uh, it's pretty much a 5% flat damage reduction um, almost up all the time. Uh, next to that is Divine Toll. You'll always take this. It can give you up to five, uh, well, technically up to 10 Holy Power, but we'll get into that later. Um, makes your judgments also deal double damage when you use it. One minute cooldown, very good. Um, Seal the Crusader. This is a very weak talent, um, two ranks, but you sort of have to take it to take the talent below it. The talent below it is Vengeful Wrath, makes your Hammer Wrath always critically strike. It's a strong talent. Um, good. Next to that is Divine Resonance. Um, that just makes your Divine Toll give another three judgments over the next 15 seconds, five seconds apart. And then lastly, over here, uh, oh, and uh, you'll never take Quicken uh, Invocation. Um, on the last choice node, um, Seal of Order. Um, gives you 10% more armor, so you're getting 30% more armor between everything. Um, and then it also gives your Holy Power Generating Abilities 10% uh, CDR, which is very good. If you don't want to take that and you're feeling like you need a little bit more defensive capability, you can instead take Fading Light, which makes all your generating uh, Holy Power Abilities gives you an Absorb Shield for 3% of the damage or Healing Dealt. Um, it's been nerfed several times. It used to be higher than 3%. Right now, it's not super great, but there are niche scenarios where you might take it. Now, let's talk about flex points and sort of uh, a couple builds, because the Paladin tree is almost always the same. So in 10.0.7, uh, for the uh, potential builds, so you can see I'm in my M plus build right now, but across all my builds, um, this talent tree does look the same. However, for M+, what you were able to do is you were able to go sort of like this, where you didn't take Seal of the Crusader, because it doesn't do any damage anyways, really. Um, and you didn't take Vengeful Wrath, and you would instead go Sanctify instead of Vanguard's Momentum. And this would do slightly more damage in M+. And you would also get a bunch more HPS through Judgment of Light. Um, this was viable, but specifically only on Fortified Weeks. Um, on Tyrannical, you would still want Vengeful Wrath. Um, and then, of course, you would go Vanguard's Momentum. However, um, going into 10.1, this build will no longer be, that build will no longer be viable. And you will always go Vengeful Wrath because the two set that I'll talk about later um, increases the damage of Hammer of Wrath by a significant amount. Now, as for flex points, uh, you have a couple of flex points. So in the sort of uh, early area, which is over here, um, which requires eight points. So if you take a look, I'll just reset the left tree. So you can see that you need eight points to unlock the next area. Um, let's sort of start with what you always need to take. You always take Lay on Hands, you always take Greater Judgment, you always take Divine Steed, you always take Rebuke, you always take Cavalier. So that sort of leaves you with three flex points um, right now. So for M+, as you saw, I was always taking Fist of Justice and Blinding Light. However, um, for Raid, for instance, or if you just don't need the two points in Vista Justice, which is what I'm considering to be the two flex points, you can instead go Cleanse Toxin, Blinding Light, and then you sort of have a flex point here um, between Obduracy, Seasoned Warhorse, and Turn Evil. Um, of those three, I would say the nicest one to have is Seasoned Warhorse because you're already so tanky. Um, that'll give you a lot of defensive capability. Now, in this next area, you always take Holy Aegis, you always take Avenging Wrath, you always take Justification, you always take Light Forge Blessing, you always take two points in Sanctified Plates, and you pretty much always take Blessing of Sacrifice. Um, additionally, you take Crusader's Reprieve, Unbreakable Spirit, 
and healing hands. So now you can see we have one point left, and this is going to be your second flex point. Now the second flex point, you can go either into obduracy, which is a good potential point. You could go into turn evil if it's situationally needed, or you could go into blessing of protection for some physical immunity or unbound freedom. So you can see you have a couple flex points throughout um, that allow you to take different situational utility or different situational tankiness. Um, and that's sort of what the Paladin tree looks like. Um, everything else, all these other points are essentially set in stone. Now, let's talk about the retribution side of the talent tree. The very first ability here that you have to take, actually you have to take the very first two, is Blade of Justice. But I currently have a lot of talents that are currently affecting this. By default, it is a 12 yard range. It generates one holy power, and it normally does about 40% more damage and only hits one target. Um, I'll go back to that later. Uh, next up here, you have Divine Storm. Uh, again, this is being affected by multiple talents. Uh, normally, this costs three holy power instead of four. Um, on this sort of next row here, you have a choice node between Swift Justice and Light of Justice. In almost all scenarios, currently, you want to take Swift Justice, which reduces the cooldown of Judgment by two seconds and increases the of Strike by two seconds. Um, there can be situations where you'll use Light of Justice, which instead reduces the cooldown of Blade by two seconds. But like I said, almost always you're going to take Swift Justice. Um, next, you have Expurgation. Uh, you're just always going to take this talent. It makes your Blade of Justice cause any target that is hit to take a bunch of extra damage over time. And this is even more effective in AoE when you make your Blade hit everything. Next to that, you have Judgment of Justice, which increases the damage by 10% and your movement speed by 10%. Uh, that 10% movement speed can essentially have a 100% uptime. There's also a slow attached to it, but you almost never take this talent because it is on the weaker side. Your talents, FYI, for the retribution side are all incredibly strong. Um, next to that is a choice node between giving Blade of Justice two charges, which is very interesting, or Holy Blade, which which is one of the modifiers that you saw that makes Blade of Justice now generate two Holy Power instead of one. You will almost always take Holy Blade. On the next row, you have Final Verdict. Final Verdict replaces Templar's Verdict. Um, Final Verdict, again by default, costs three Holy Power and has a 12 yard range instead of 20. Um, it's just a slightly stronger version of Templar's Verdict. Uh, the attack power slightly higher, and then it also gives a 15% chance to re uh, reset the cooldown on Hammer of Wrath uh, and make it usable on any target regardless of health, um, which is a very powerful effect. And that is why you will almost never take just the cards Vengeance. It's just weaker. Um, next to that, you have a choice node of Light's Celerity um, and Guided Prayer. Of these two, I always take Guided Prayer. It is a passive that will just save your life when you get low um, and word of glory is extremely powerful um, pretty much this passive says is once a minute when you go below 25 percent health you can automatically heal yourself to full um, for free passively it's fantastic um, next to that is a choice node righteous cause and art of war you will always take art of war it makes your auto attacks have a 20 percent chance to reset blade very good uh, here is one of the modifiers, Jurisdiction. It makes Final Verdict and Blade of Justice deal 10% more damage. And the modification part is the range of Blade and Final Verdict is now 20 yards each instead of 12. Next to that, you have, uh, oh, and you will almost always take Jurisdiction. Um, so far, almost all of the uh, talents I've talked about so far, you, you will take all of those almost all the time. Uh, next is your first choice node that is actually, you know, jokingly a choice. Um, you have Tempest of the Lightbringer, which in most situations you will take this one. It makes your Divine Storm uh, essentially do 20% more damage. Um, but more importantly, this Tempest is uncapped. So what it actually does is it copies 20% of your 
uh, Divine Storm's damage, and that part, that 20% is not target capped, while normal Divine Storm does reduce damage after five targets. Um, the choice, uh, Inquisition's Ire, it makes a stacking Divine Storm that deals more damage over time. Um, this talent you will often combine with a talent called Imperial Legacy, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you will most of the time either take Tempest or Lightbringer or nothing at all. Once in a while, you'll take Inquisition's Ire. Next to that is Shield of Vengeance. Um, this is a talent you will always take. It's you know a large shield for 10 seconds, also does damage. Uh, next is a choice node. Um, at the beginning of the tier, I was more often taking Sanctify, or sorry, at the beginning of 10.0.7, I was often taking Sanctify. Um, but I currently always take Vanguard's Momentum, which gives Hammer Wrath one extra charge. Um, and it also makes you generate one additional Holy Power on enemies below 20% health. Um, next to that is Zealot's Fervor, which uh, increases your auto attack speed by 20%. So that will help um, not only make you do slightly more damage, but also gets more Art of War resets. It's a nice talent, but currently there's no place for it in really any build. Um, it's just less damage than most other options. Next, you have a choice node. Uh, this is another choice node that's no choice at all. Um, Consecrated Ground is useless. Uh, just don't even bother. Um, the other option here is Rush of Light. Uh, Rush of Light gives you a decent uptime on 5% haste. Um, this will only be taken in single target or primarily single target scenarios. So in uh, areas such as M+, I don't take this. Uh, next is another choice node. Again, this one is not much of a choice. It's interesting, though. Uh, you can either have Judgment have two charges, or you can have it generate one additional Holy Power. You will almost always go with Boundless Judgment to uh, get one additional Holy Power for a couple reasons. Um, one of the ulterior uh, reasons outside of your normal rotation is because of um, Divine Resonance from Divine Toll, and also just Divine Toll in general. Um, it, it, uh, it's, it's pretty strong, and you will almost always take it. Next to that is one of the most controversial talent choices um, that people like to talk about, which is uh, Templar Strikes and Crusading Strikes. So by default, you have Crusader Strike, um, and you can have that either become Crusading Strikes, um, which people like to refer to as CSAA. Um, it essentially makes Crusader Strike replace your auto attack. Um, However, it, every other auto attack will generate you a holy power. Um, the problem is, by default, it does physical damage. And for this talent to be effective at all, you are essentially required to take multiple other talents, such as um, Blades of Light, Divine Arbiter, uh, potentially even Zealot's Favor, um, and potentially Hardened Crusader, just to make it uh, viable. Um, so. What I and most Paladins do is we currently take Templar Strikes in all scenarios, because what Templar Strikes does is by itself, it makes Crusade, Crusader Strike, um, instead of doing physical damage, which has many reductions, such as like the 30% armor reduction, um, it makes it do, uh, I believe, uh, Radiant Damage. Um, so you automatically will benefit from Mastery, and then you will also automatically ignore armor. So it does way more damage. Additionally, um, the second strike, which not only does it slightly more damage than the first strike, it also has a 100% chance to critically strike, which is uh, very powerful. So it's, it's a two-part combo. Uh, next to that is uh, Divine Wrath, which increases the duration of Avenging Wrath or Crusade by three seconds. Uh, this one is situational. I take it in some builds. Um, Next to that is a choice node of Consecrated Blade and Divine Hammer. However, you will take Consecrated Blade in 100% of builds currently. Um, this essentially just gets rid of Consecration. It's no longer a button you even have. And Blade of Justice now casts Consecration at the target's location. Baseline Consecration has a 20 second cooldown. This passive uh, can occur once every 10 seconds. So the passive by itself, not only is it saving you GCDs, 
it's also able to use consecration twice as often. It's it just, it's good. It, it's very good. It's free damage. It's passive. And you're just never going to take the Vine Hammer because the, the, the damage is pretty bad um, on the Vine Hammer. If it, it would have to do significantly more damage for it to be a viable choice. Next to this is a choice node of Blade of Vengeance and Imperian Legacy. So the one I currently have talented is Blade of Vengeance, and that's why Blade of Justice's damage is much lower. Here, I will swap this so you guys can see what it normally looked like. Um, so normally, instead of 17,000 something, Blade of Justice would uh, pierce in enemy, so you know, a single for 25,658. Uh, um, but because this is my M plus build, instead of hitting one target, I want to hit many. So what this ability does is it now hits all enemies. It deals reduced damage beyond five, but the more important thing is it hits all nearby enemies. And that allows you to apply expurgation uh, to all of those enemies as well. And expurgation damage is not reduced because it's just a damage over time. Um, so it's very powerful, especially in AoE scenarios. Um, the other option here, Imperium Legacy, in single target and um, low number of target fights, so like single target, two target, um, you'll take Imperium Legacy instead. And this makes, uh, this is an ability, I believe, originally from Shadowlands. It makes your next single target uh, Holy Power ability to automatically activate a 25% increased Divine Storm. It's triggered by Judgment, uh, and it can occur once every 20 seconds. Um, and if you note the 20 seconds, that lines up very well with Inquisitor's Ire, because 20 seconds is the perfect amount of time to get to the maximum stacks of a 50% increased Divine Storm. On the next row here, uh, Vanguards of Justice. This was the other modifier that was changing my Holy Power Spenders that deal damage. So that's my um, final verdict and my Divine Storm. Note, it does not touch your Word of Glory. Uh, it makes it cost one additional holy power, so four instead of three, and deals 20% increased damage. Currently, with tuning and the way that this saves G GCDs, you will always take it. Next to that, you have Heart of the Crusader. Um, this town is situational. You take it in some single target builds. Uh, so it, it is potentially interesting for AoE, but I currently don't take it um, in any AoE builds solely because other talents are stronger. Um, but it is one to keep an eye on, and it's interesting. It is used situationally. Next to that is High Lord's Judgment. Don't even bother with this. Don't take it, please. It, it, it's just not good. Um, it, it's not worth it. And by the way, uh, the Tier 7 10.1 will make you take it even less. Next to that is a Choice Node of Avenging Wrath Might, which just adds critical strike chance to the already 20% additional damage of normal... Um, Avenging Wrath. Um, uh, the choice here is Crusade, uh, but you're never going to take Crusade. Um, mainly because if you noticed, uh, Normal Wings is a one minute cooldown, Crusade is a two minute cooldown. Yes, it is seven seconds longer, but it, a one minute cooldown is infinitely better. Uh, it's not a choice at all. You currently never ever take Crusade. Um, and that is not changing in 10.1. You will always take Avenging Wrath Might. Next to that, uh, Blush Champion. Uh, this is a very, very powerful talent that you'll take situationally. It makes your Crusader Strike and Judgment hit an additional four targets, but deal 50% reduced damage to secondary targets. This essentially makes your Crusader Strike, or any variant of it, and your Judgment uh, hit five targets, or up to five targets. Um, you will always take this in M+. Plus. And you will any, always take this in situations where you need to hit one, more than one target. Um, so it's very, very powerful ability. Lastly, in this row, there's a choice node. Uh, you have Judge, Jury, and Executioner, which you will just never take. It is just incredibly weak. It just gives 10% crit to Judgment. And Judgment is already a low prio ability that does on the lower damage, so you never take it. And then you have Imperium Power, which uh, can be taken situationally. Uh, it makes your Crusader Strike or any variant of it have a 15% chance to make your next Divine Storm free and deal 15% more damage. I currently have this talented because I like this ability for M+. Now let's talk about the 20 plus point section. You have Adjudication, which makes your Critical Strike damage of all abilities deal 5% more. 
and also your hammer of wrath critical strikes uh, cause a bless hammer to spiral out from you. Uh, this ability you take in all builds, always. Um, similarly, Aegis of Protection, this makes your Divine Protection uh, be a 30% DR instead of 20%, and it also makes your Shield of Vengeance slightly bigger. Uh, similarly, you will always take this ability in all situations. Lastly, you have uh, Penitence, this makes your damage over time deal 10% more. Um, this ability is situational, uh, but you do take it in many builds. On the next row, you have Blades of Light. This makes your Crusader Strike, Judgment, Hammer of Wrath, and your damage single target, uh, Holy Power Abilities, deal Holy Strike. Um, it's essentially a dead talent. Um, it is useful if you take CSAA to make it deal Holy Strike instead of Physical to get your Mastery Bonus and ignore Armor. Um, but generally speaking, it is a dead talent for all intents and purposes. Um, but you have to take it if you want to get Divine Arbiter. Uh, here you have a choice node, Final Reckoning and Execution Sentence. In single target fights, you'll take Execution Sentence. In AoE, you'll take Final Reckoning. Pretty straight, straightforward, cut and dry. Uh, next is Wake of Ashes. You take this ability in all circumstances. It's a signature ability of Retribution Paladin, uh, one of your highest damage abilities, and also generates Holy Power. Um, it's extremely powerful and has multiple modifiers that make it even stronger. Uh, Burning Crusade makes your Consecration and Divine Storm deal Radiant Damage, and also all Radiant Damage uh, is increased by 5%, um, so that would also include uh, stuff like Expurgation that deals Radiant Damage. Now, on the last row, you have Divine Arbiter. So Divine Arbiter makes all your Holy Strike damage abilities deal 5%, so that's sort of where Blades of Light come into play. Um, so all the stuff affected by Blades of Light uh, will deal 5% increased damage, and then they also gain a stack um, of Divine Arbiter. When you're at 25 stacks, your next um, final verdict in this case deals a bunch of extra Holy Strike damage to your primary target, and then a bit of Holy Strike damage to enemies within six yards. Um, this is an ability that you take in single target, and occasionally in scenarios that are slightly more than one target, um, but it is a situational ability. So for instance, in M+, I do not take this. Uh, next to that is Executioner's Will. Um, Executioner's Will, you will often take this more with uh, Execution Sentence than you will with Final Reckoning, but it is a situational ability that you will sometimes take, uh, more so in single target or low target, uh, low numbers of targets. Uh, next to that is Divine Auxiliary. Uh, you'll just never take this talent, don't bother with it. Next to that is Seething Flame and Troops Wake. These are modifiers for Wake of Ashes that make Wake of Ashes both do significantly more damage. Um, you can take both, they're interesting. Um, so the one that you take in AoE always is Troops Wake. Um, you can also take this one in single target because it's just extremely powerful. It makes Wake of Ashes do... Um, essentially like another like 60% more damage over 9 seconds. Um, and this uh, Troops Wake is uncapped as well. Uh, Seething Flame is interesting. It reads that Wake of Ashes deals significantly reduced damage to secondary targets, but it now makes you lash out two additional times for another 26,000 damage each, which if you add that up, the two additional lashes do um, like more damage than the total. <laughs> it, it, it's very powerful. Um, the net math on this, the way it works is you will always take this in single target and you also almost always take it in AOE because, um, the two addition with the two additional ashes, even though the primary, um, even though just wake of ashes does quote unquote reduce damage to secondary targets, the total amount of damage that the secondary targets take is actually about 30% higher, um, than it would be without the talent. So because of that, this talent you will almost always take in both single target and AoE. Um, so it's just very, very powerful. Lastly, we have Searing Light. Um, Searing Light is just this nuke from the sky that deals a bunch of damage uh, to all nearby enemies. And then it also leaves a Consecration in its wake. Deals reduced damage beyond eight targets, but there's very few cases where there's more than eight targets. Um, so it's a good, very good AoE ability.
Uh, going into 10.1, there are only two main changes that are happening to any of the talents here. The first change is Seal of the Crusader is going to deal double the damage. It currently deals 5% attack power um, per rig. It'll now do 10%. So instead of like, for instance, 28, uh, 1228 additional damage, it'll deal closer to 2500, or sorry, 2450. Um, and then Searing Light is getting a quality of life update that instead of calling down the explosion on your current location, um, which does cause it to miss sometimes or only partially hit people or partially have the enemies in consecration, it will now go down on the target that it got triggered on. So it will now be much more centered. Um, it is much nicer. You'll never miss it. It'll do slightly more damage because of that. Now, as for viable builds, so the build that you currently see is the build that I use for M+, currently in 10.0.7, as well as the build that I will use for 10.1. This build is viable. It will be in the description. It is also in my Discord. Now, I have a couple other builds. Um, these builds will change because these were made for specific bosses, but this can give you an idea of some other potential builds that are viable. For starters, I have the single target build over here that I use for raid. Uh, this, a bit, this one takes advantage of additional damage from Blade of Justice, uh, Imperium Power, it uses Divine Arbiter, Blades of Light, Executioner's Will, and Heart of the Crusader. Um, I also don't need uh, Blinding Light or Fist of Justice, so instead I take some additional utilities such as Diva Aura if needed, Obduracy, and additional speed in Season Warhorse. This is the build that I specifically used in 10.0 for tariffs, um, but this is just a good example of the current highest single target build that is possible um, with our current tier set and our current talents. Um, this is a good example for what a single target build will look like. Um, it might change slightly in the future, but this should give you sort of a good idea. Another build that is a good example is this is the uh, Mythic Council build. Um, so currently, this is your highest AoE. So this is what I was talking about when you don't take Seal the Crusader and Vengeful Wrath. I did this sometimes in, in M+. Uh, a perfect example of this is Mythic Council, which is a four target boss that you're never doing single target damage. So instead, you can get a bit more HPS and a bit more damage from these talents. Um, Karag, which is a two target fight most of the time. Um, this is a good example of what a two target build would look like that is close to optimal. Um, so for instance, here you could see that I take one point in Blessed Champion that allows me to hit three targets with my Crusader Strike and Judgment. Um, you can also take many different variations and combinations of single target and AoE builds, um, such as my Razagef build, which this build is primarily focused on dealing single target. So you'll see a lot of the single target talents are taken, but I take a couple of AoE talents just to deal with the couple of scenarios that you're dealing with AoE. So specifically, I take Tempest of Lightbringer and I take Blade of Vengeance. But aside from that, pretty much all the other talents are single target focused. With all these changes in mind, let's quickly summarize the scaling and class changes. With the rework, the scaling on all your core abilities have changed. Instead of further discussing the minute details, let's discuss what ultimately changed. The end result is your holy power generators are much more impactful and make up a larger amount of your total damage, especially in AoE. Additionally, gameplay feels much more fluid. On the mobility front, you can have 50% more divine speed than before, and additionally, movement can be specced into via Unbound Freedom for 30% more move speed for 8 seconds, and Judgment of Justice for 100% uptime on 10% move speed. On the tankiness front, you are significantly tankier. Retribution Powden went from one of the squishiest DPS specs to one of the tankiest overall specs, literally overnight. Before, we had a 100k shield that lasted 15 seconds, a 3.5 minute immunity, 
and a 5% passive reduction, passive damage reduction. And that was it. Now we have an incredibly long list of great defensives, including a 150k shield lasting 10 seconds on a one minute CD, a 30% DR that can even be used while stunned lasting eight seconds on a one minute CD, 5% damage reduction, 10% more stamina, 10% reduced damage from area of effect, which is essentially 10% avoidance, but stacks with avoidance and doesn't count towards penalties, 30% more armor. We can additionally talent into bot for a 10 second physical immunity. We can talent into Blessing of Sacrifice to give someone else a 30% DR. We have a passive that makes you full heal when you go below 25% HP on a one minute CD. Every single Crusader Strike or any variant of it heals you for 2% of your maximum health. Every Divine Storm heals you and four other players for 2% of their maximum health. And there are also a few other healing and shielding options that we can take to provide a few additional thousand HPS. However, they are rarely taken. What a crazy improvement, right? With Rep Pally getting a complete rework, our damage rotation has changed. Let's talk about it. Now, this is probably a lot of information to take in all at once. So let's go over it slowly. Let's start with your generic opener. So if you take a look, the Retribution Paladin opener starts as follows. You go Blade of Justice, then Judgment. This is to get both your Blade of Justice and Judgment on cooldown. This will get you to four Holy Power. The third GCD you're going to do is going to be a macro. Uh, and dependent on whether you have Execution Sentence or Final Reckoning, your macro might be a little bit different. But it's going to be Avenging Wrath, plus your Pot, plus, in this case for Single Target, Execution Sentence. After that, you're going to go Hammer of Wrath. This is going to give you five Holy Power. You're going to go Templar's Verdict. You're now at one Holy Power. Wake of Ashes. You're now at four Holy Power. Hammer of Wrath. You're now at five Holy Power again. Templar's Verdict. You're at one Holy Power. And the ninth GCD, Divine Toll, will bring you back up to three Holy Power. From here, you continue with the regular Prio list. Now, the regular Prio list which is right below this. Uh, highest prio is Avenging Wrath. After that is Templar's Verdict, when you uh, are full on Holy Power. Uh, and after that is Wake. Wake is just something you always want to use on cooldown as much as possible, preferably with two or less. Um, after that is Divine Toll. Then Hammer of Wrath. Then Templar Slash, if it's about to expire. Uh, Blade of Justice, if three or less Holy Power. Judgment, if three or less Holy Power and no debuff. Templar's Verdict, if available, uh, so that's four Holy Power as opposed to five. Then Templar Strike, and lastly Judgment. Judgment is the lowest priority if there already is a debuff. That's a lot to take in. Um, one other big thing to note, if you also have an on-use trinket that provides main stat or substat with no channel, then you can also add it to the macro in step three of the Retribution Paladin opener. Remember that ES, Execution Sentence, should always be the last line in the macro. If you have an instant damage trinket, you can also macro this here. Make sure it is after wings in the macro so you're getting that 20% extra crit. If your damage trinket has a channel, such as a Manic Reef Torch, then when you use it will depend on a couple factors. One is how strong is it? How long is the fight? Uh, do you need your trinket for something specific? Does it have? Does the trinket have some sort of special effect on it that might also cause you to use it at a certain point? Um, you, you might even pre-channel the trinket um, when the fight is starting if the channel doesn't actually do damage itself, uh, like the trinket in 10.1 on the final boss. Um, or you might also do when Wings is over. If it is very, very strong, you might use it at the start or end of Wings uh, for that 20% bonus crit chance. It really depends on the trinket. Now, for the Retribution Powden AoE opener uh, and priority, generally speaking, it is Avenging Wrath, Divine Storm if you're full on Holy Power, Wake, ideally with two or less, but if it is a very large pack and you need to get your Wake off cooldown, uh, I don't think anyone's going to really fault you if you do it at three or less holy power, but again, ideally two or less. After that, it's Divine Toll, then Hammer of Wrath, then Templar Slash if it's about to expire, 
After that, it's blade of justice. Getting that expurgation on everything is very important. Then it is judgment. Again, if for your less holy power, no debuff. Uh, then you see divine storm at four holy power, judgment, Templar strike. Now, it is worth noting a couple things here. First of all, this is the priority list for 10.1. And it assumes that you have the new four piece tier set that is making your Hammer Wrath not only do 25% more damage, uh, also, especially in the AoE opener, it has the ability to chain to additional targets. Um, some other miscellaneous notes. Uh, first, try not to waste or munch Holy Power. If you have a choice between a spender and a builder, Use the Builder because it has a cooldown, and you want to get those cooldowns out as much as possible. If you use Divine Arbiter or Imperian Legacy, you may need to occasionally break the Prio list to get those large chunks of damage on CD again. And last, or sorry, second to last, in the vast majority of scenarios, you send cooldown your cooldowns on CD uh, since you are a one minute slash 30 second spec. Lastly, the following is true for most builds because of Jurisdiction. Uh, note that Jurisdiction gives 10% more damage to both Blade and also your final verdict. Uh, single target, you always use Templar or Final. Uh, if 2 plus target, uh, essentially if you have Tempest at a Lightbringer, then 2 plus targets is efficient for Divine Storm. Otherwise, it's 3 plus targets for Divine Storm. One last thing to note here is that if you do not have the new tier set, then Hammer Wrath will be slightly lower in this priority list. But generally speaking, these priority lists are a pretty good go-to and should serve you well for 10.1. Now, let's quickly talk about the tier set. So the tier set for 10.0 was extremely simple and straightforward. The two set, it gave your Judgment, Blade of Justice, and Wake of Ashes, 15% more damage, just a flat damage increase. Similarly, your four set also gave just a 10% flat damage increase to your final verdict and your divine storm. The net result is this tier set gave you about a seven to 8% increase in both single target and AOE, somewhere around there. Uh, not too great, not that bad. It was about in the middle. Now, in 10.1, the tier set is much more interesting. So the two set gives Judgment 10% increased damage, and then it also gives it a 15% increased critical strike damage. So when it critically strikes, it'll do an additional 15%. Hammer of Wrath, what it will essentially read, rather than the 10% damage increase and then another 15% for critical strike, but what, because your Hammer of Wrath will always critically strike, because you will always take Vengeful Wrath, it essentially reads Hammer of Wrath does 25% more damage than it does currently on 10.0.7. Uh, this two set is considered pretty strong. The four set is interesting. Uh, oh, and uh, one last part for the two set. Hammer of Wrath now also applies judgment to enemies. So this means uh, you will have the judgment uh, debuff on enemies far more often. Now, the fourth set is also interesting. So the first part says judgment increases the damage enemy. So when it says judgment, it means the judgment debuff increases the damage enemies take from your holy power spenders by an additional 15%. Uh, so greater judgment currently increases the damage by 20%. It will now be 35%. The second part is also very interesting. Hammer Wrath now hits four nearby targets for 20% of its damage. Now, what does this look like? Let me show you. So now watch this here on these target dummies. If I use my Hammer Wrath, it hits all the targets. Cool, right? And it has a pretty decent range too. It's hard to say exactly right now but I believe that this new tier set will end up being possibly about the same damage in terms of single target, maybe a little bit lower. However, in AoE, I do expect this damage to be pretty comparable. Overall, I think the tier set will be roughly comparable, give or take 1% or 2% on either side to the previous tier set. 
but the we the final verdict is uh, still out on whether this tier set is better or worse. We won't know until we have a ton of data from live. Next up, let's talk about stat scaling and stat priority. Going into this rework, not too much has changed with our stat scaling. The rep pound and substat scaling post rework for level 70 is still crit, haste, and versatility all remained the same as they do with all other classes at 180, 170, and 205, respectively. Mastery, however, was nerfed significantly from what was 112.5 points per 1% to 180 points per 1%, which is the same as crit. Overall, damage that is holy has been increased with the rework from what was often about 85 to 90% of our damage being holy to now often being in the 95 to 98% range. It's essentially just your auto attack. Overall, despite the increase in effectiveness of mastery on our spec, the nerf outweighs the gain and it is no longer our most sought after stat. Generally speaking, strength is greater than crit, which is about equal to versatility, which is greater than haste, which is greater than mastery. This puts mastery as our lowest stat priority. Now, some really important things to note here. First, you will want somewhere around about 20% haste for ret to quote unquote feel good. Note that feeling good does not mean optimal. It just means it feels good to play. As always, stat priority is dynamic in nature and will not be the same for everyone. The above is just a general guideline on how it tends to play out. Please, sim yourself. Now, it is also important to remember substat scaling penalties. These penalties on the screen, as you can see, from 0 to 30%, there is no penalty. From 30 to 39%, there's a 10% penalty. From 39 to 47, there's a 20%. 47 to 54, there's a 30%. 54 to 66, there's a 40%, and 66 to 126, there's a 50% penalty. You cannot gain more than 126% from gear rating. Uh, it's worth noting that that amount will almost never happen anyways. Note that flat percentage increases from talents, races, and abilities, for instance, like Lust giving you 30% haste or Wings giving you 20% crit, ignore these rules and are not counted against the penalties. For instance, with 2000 mastery, you have about 23% mastery on ret right now. However, only 11% of that is coming from gear substats. Note that 11% is being applied towards this penalty. Large substat giving trinkets are in fact applied towards the diminishing returns and will often result in less percentage increase than expected. This can clearly be seen when using trinkets like the Algathar puzzle box, which grants over 4,000 mastery points. Going into 10.1 and also after the Ret Paladin rework, the long duration consumables as well as battle consumables that you will want to use have not changed. The vial you will want to use is still the vial of tepid versatility, which gives you 745 versatility for 30 minutes and can be stacked up to two times for one hour. You will still want to use the draconic augment rune, which gives 86 strength for one hour. You will still want to use the faded fortune cookie or the grand banquet, which both give you 75 primary stat. And for weapons, you will either want to use a primal weight stone, sorry, primal wet stone or primal weight stone, depending on what type your weapon is, for 135 attack power, or you can use runes such as the howling rune or the buzzing rune, which give 310 at crit rating apiece. For gems, you will want to sim your character. There are many different gems. You will generally want to use one that gives both of the uh, substats. If you already have a gem 
that gives you a primary one. You can only have one primary gem. For battle consumables, you will want to use the elemental potion of ultimate power. And for healing potions, you will want to use the refreshing healing potion, which restores somewhere around 130,000 health. The enchants that you will want to use on your character are pretty much the same. The cloak, you'll still want to use graceful avoidance for the reduced fall damage, as well as the avoidance. Chest, you'll still want to use waking stats. Bracers, you'll still want to use devotion of avoidance. For your legs, you'll still want to use the fierce armor kit. Boots, you'll still want Plains Runner's Breeze for the increased speed. And for Ring, you'll want to sim yourself. Most of the time, it'll probably be the Devotion of Crit or the Devotion of, Devotion of Versatility. Please, sim your character. Now, your weapon is the one primary thing that you will see a bit of change. Before, we used to use the uh, Frozen Devotion. But after the rework, we are most likely going to be using the Sophic Devotion. The one thing to keep your eye out is the new Shadow Flame enchant, but jury is still out on whether Sophic or the Shadow Flame enchant is going to be the best one to use, but most likely it's going to be Sophic. For Strems, the Retribution Paladin has great damage, tankiness, and varied utility, including a raid buff via Retribution Aura, which gives all members more damage and healing, or Devotion Aura which reduces all damage taken. I didn't mention this before, but Retribution Aura was reworked to now be more of a raid buff like Devo Aura, and competitive raid groups will now require two Paladins, one for Devo and one for Retribution Aura, making Retribution Paladin a much more likely pick for top raid groups. Retribution Paladin's current state, as of the end of 10.0.7, is in the upper 75% of damage dealing specs for raid, and in my opinion, the highest damage dealing spec and best overall spec for damage dealers in M+. Going into 10.1, I expect this to continue to be one of the best specs for M+, due to our very good tankiness and self-healing, since healing will become harder in 10.1 due to the stamina scaling of players and damage dealing scaling of enemies. A lot of our healing is percent based and will not be affected by those changes. Our utility, such as cleanse, freedom, and turn evil, amongst other things, will also make us a prime pick in 10.1 since we can easily deal with many of the new affixes that are coming. Additionally, I expect our damage to be in the upper 75% of M plus specs since our core damage profile is not changing. I expect our raid damage to drop from one of the highest towards the middle 50% since our new tier set is roughly the same or slightly lower damage wise than the 10.0 tier set, but more so because while Vault of the Incarnates primarily focused on cleave slash AoE fights, which Rhett excels in, Abris is almost entirely single target focused. As for weaknesses, although better than before, Retribution Paladin still struggles with mobility compared to other classes. Our rework gives us a bit more mo movement speed, and we can use a larger portion of our damage kit from range, but it is still a weakness. In conclusion, Retribution Paladin is shaping up to be a prime pick for all PvE content in 10.1, and I can happily say that unlike 10.0, I can highly suggest playing this spec as either a main or an alt or picking it up as a new spec to learn. The spec is rather intuitive to play, the flow feels much better, and does not take a lot of time to understand the basics. Being the only damage spec for the Paladin class, Blizzard has openly stated that they will make an effort to make Retribution always viable, and so far, this appears to be true. All the resources, builds, nicely packaged notes, Everything you saw in this video will be available in my Discord, which is linked below. Additionally, I will provide a few of the talent builds that you can directly import into the game in the description of this video. I used the knowledge I gained from playing Retribution over, for over a decade, combined with many weeks of research, testing, recording, editing, 
et cetera, to make a guide like this. And I hope that everyone appreciates the efforts and enjoys the results. I hope to create the best retribution guide on the internet. And I believe that my guide often goes far deeper than any other guide out there, hence its length. If any major changes happen in 10.1, I will leave edits in the description of the video if those changes will contradict anything I previously said when I originally recorded this video. If you enjoyed this guide and would like to see my other content, such as High Mythic Plus and rating gameplay, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to know when my next video goes live. There are not many other Retribution Paladins that post online. I often post three to four times a week and sometimes even daily. If you think this specific video was very informative, please hit the like button or comment or send it to a friend as that helps greatly. Hell, you can do all of the above. I regularly discuss the state of Retribution Powden as well as stream a lot of the content you will find on this YouTube channel first over on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash gore underscore gaming. And the link to that will also be in the description. I thank you all for the time that you took to watch this video until the end, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in 10.1. Forever, the GOAT Retribution Paladin, Gorlock.